Star Citizen have given us a load of ship updates from the Banu Merchantman to the Corsair, the Vulture, the Hull Sea. Let's jump in and look at some of these mighty ships and have a bit of a talk about them. The Corsair is moving into its grey box phase now. This is Drake's answer to something in between a Constellation Aquila and Carrick for some serious but no frills exploration or sort of general multi-crew, multi-role gameplay. They are making sure that at the moment they're happy with the metrics and the block out of all the interior and exterior of the ship going does this fit here does it have all the space we need does it look right there is a hangar bay at the rear of the ship and we go in there and this leads to the main component room and then onto the habitation area that has a toilet and dining area in it i'm um, going towards the front of the ship there's a uh, then general access section well leads uh, around the ship but also to the cockpit and the cockpit is planned to be built out first and then act as a style guide for the rest of the ship as well the ship is very hype and is going to be a multi-crew dream for me very much looking forward to it being in the game it appears to be one of the more popular ships that players want in the game asap the drake vulture light salvager is further along the pipeline though and is planned for release in alpha 3.18 it's pushing through its final art phase with work on the levels of detail lods being focused on and it's wear and tear shader at the moment then they're going to move on to vfx and lighting passes once that task is complete it's coming with its salvage mechanics and that's going to be able to hull strip other ships or at least salvage locations we'll have to wait and see exactly uh, what the first iteration of salvage means because we will be able to do hull stripping by hand and with ships but is it specific ships that have been placed there like a mining node or is it going to be all ships or only ships that have been disabled or destroyed it's it's interesting because we don't know yet um in the first iteration anyway banu merchantman explorations continue they're testing out the look and feel of internal rooms for the medical care center there so that looks to have at least sort of two mid-tier or high tier beds at the moment in fact there could be a lot more going on here because all of the rooms in the banu merchantman look massive there's so much internal space obviously they want this larger internal space because some of the aliens they might deal with might be a bit taller than humans uh, and because they just generally like space and these ships it's, it's a slightly alien big floating market it's, it's kind of cool they showed off a security room or security area there as well which is pretty massive uh, and uh, a ridiculously large sized washroom They've been talking about having facilities in those washrooms for Banu and Xi'an too. They didn't mention Tavarin, I don't think, which is a bit of a shame. I want to see Tavarin toilets. Um, they are experimenting with landing gear and the rigging for it as well. So uh, the gear is massive and looks like a backwards sort of animal leg. It, it's going to have to be able to take the hefty weight of the merchantman and all its cargo. Um, so the merchantman is making quite a lot of progress already. Uh, it's moving through the pipeline pretty quickly. Uh, it is in active development, but I'm expecting the grey box and final art phases to take quite a while. We'll have to sort of see how it goes this year. Um, there is work that's planned to complete for it by Q3 of this year, and we don't know what work will be needed for the ship beyond that. It is possible it could be a Q4 release, but I think that is unlikely. It's more likely to be early next year at the earliest, but I suppose we'll have to wait and see. Without a bit more context on the progress tracker, I have to read the animal bones. But I am surprised about how quickly it is making progress now. Uh, I'm looking forward to being able to make some money by trading on the outskirts of systems and having players and NPCs use the shops on board. I really want to run a flying supermarket, a flying little market, mobile market. If you want that, then this is your ship. Uh, the Scorpius Heavy Fighter has had one of its wings completed um, to the final art phase. They're then going to duplicate this or mirror it for the other three wings. The entry and exit points will work too, as did color tints. We can expect to see this Heavy Fighter with its very mobile turret in Alpha 3.17. Cloud Imperium then showed off the Hull Sea in more detail. Looking through its rather large interior, all the tech needed for the Hull Sea has now been completed and the ship has been updated somewhat since it first entered the pipeline. It's pretty massive! And they also, at the same time, have been working on a tractor beam and remote camera UI for it as well. So it sounds like we're going to be getting tractor beams out for ships reasonably soon. And that's pretty cool. It makes sense as there's a big cargo refactor going on uh, in uh, Q2 of this year. And they're going to want to get that cargo and uh, sort of similar 
um, sort of hauling gameplay all in a good place. The Hull A is coming out in Alpha 3.17, but they're going to keep on checking back with the Hull C um, on sort of Inside Star Citizen and with development updates. Uh, I'm still expecting it later this year, probably in 3.19, sort of like the Q3 patch is where I'm expecting the Hull C at the moment. Also from Inside Star Citizen, there was an origin story for a Star Citizen community member that had joined the CIG team. Will Price is a gameplay capture artist. He was responsible for Raftron and uh, a, a cave full of Picos that no one's found yet, apparently. But also, he did the Doctor Strangelove styled missile ride too, and the sort of uh, work towards that, um, or at least some work on it. He was a freelance cinematographer and loved to work on music videos. He originally was a backer who pledged in 2016. Um, his ability to help build scenes for trailers, ship ads, and marketing is pretty awesome. Um, one of his main roles is to film the B-roll for Inside Star Citizen, but also patch trailers and those ship ads too. So he will typically get this footage in the dev branch or pre evocati branches of the game which can be pretty unstable, so good on him. Uh, he does get to play with new features and areas before anyone else though, and he clearly loves working for Cloud Imperium. He didn't want to work in the games industry, he wanted to work in Star Citizen, which is kind of cool. Uh, I've realized he does a very similar job to Zin, at least in part, who captures footage for me at the moment and is learning to capture more footage, better footage, and we're going to be doing lots of gameplay together in the future. I've gone off on a bit of a tangent. Uh, John Crew, vehicle director at Cloud Imperium, put out a tweet as well. So, at Disco Lando, wanted to play a game, so I'll play a game. One lives, two die. The battle trolley, Orison shuttle ship, Cutlass Black Toilet. So the Orison shuttle ship, uh, one of these um, used for player transport uh, around Crusader, is currently winning that comedy poll. However, I do want a toilet in my Cutlass Black. The free fly is ending, but we still have the Nine Towers lockdown and Jump Town events until the 4th and 6th of March, respectively. There have been some tweaks with payouts as Cloud Imperium tests some things. We are going to be moving into March next week, and we should see a roadmap update, um, which um, always have me a little anxious since a few weeks ago. Uh, but we should also be seeing a monthly report um, too, which should put the roadmap in a bit more context now, and I'm very much looking forward to this roadmap sort of update and monthly report um, especially. So at 5pm UTC today, on Friday the 25th of Feb, um, at time of recording anyway, there is a EUPU, so a um, Persistent Universe gameplay feature um, team talking on Star Citizen Live about gameplay features and uh, answering all your questions for all that. So that's on the Star Citizen Twitch channel and I think it's going to be pretty informative. I will get a summary up of that on the weekend but that should be some pretty exciting, tangible gameplay information there. Anyway, boom. Thanks for watching. I'm interested to know what you think. Are you excited for the Banning Merchantman? When do you think it might be finished? Um, it currently has work going on until mid-September on the roadmap. Could the stars align? Could it be a Q4 release? Is it something they might show at CitizenCon? Or is it something we might see next year? Because how could they possibly get such a big, complicated ship uh, in the game later this year? Are you looking forward to Alpha 3.17 as we move into March? Do you want to start hearing about the Apollo or the Polaris? And what is your favourite ship that has yet to be released? What have your thoughts? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Mummy, my friend told me at school today that, that Star Citizen was a scam. Oh, Tim, is that why you got into a fight? Yes, Mummy. The only scam is people stealing all your internet infos and blocking your ability to watch things on Netflix and such with regional-based access. That's why we use our words, Tim. You should have told those bullies to get NordVPN, and also that Star Citizen is the best damn space sim ever. <laughs> yes, these two people are right. Get NordVPN, and also, Star Citizen's great. Also, Timmy was a 35-year-old teacher at the school. And it wasn't even a school, it was a pub, and he was a barman. Every month we have a ship giveaway, and for February 2022, it's for an Aegis Sabre, the high-tech medium fighter with loads of firepower, but it comes in an auspicious red paint scheme as part of the Red Festival, as well as lifetime insurance and a Star Citizen game package. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning is comment on any of my videos made during the month. You can further support the channel by clicking the join button underneath any of my videos. You can also donate or become a Patreon. Your feedback though from comments really helps the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, if you're looking for a diegetic little controlly boy, 
um, that makes your Star Citizen experience and potentially some other games pretty good fun on your touchscreen devices, then check out Game Glass. You've got that, you've got NordVPN links, you've got loads of other stuff, all in the links below. Click them all. Click them all. Maybe not all of them, that would be madness.